Oh, 
bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If it were not for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be today? Hold on for just a minute for you. I'm telling you, when we hear the ministers say that God will hold you up and God will not let you fall, you know, that's something to really get excited about. And the reason for us to get excited, because two words go into play. One is grace. God, unmerited favor, unmerited love. Giving us things that we do not deserve and absolutely have not earned. But when grace gives you something you don't deserve, God will then give you peace. I need somebody to understand you. When you receive great grace, you get peace on the other end. And if you got peace, you ain't going to fall. You're going to rejoice in the name of the Lord. Y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't getting this thing. If it wasn't for grace, you'd be gone. But because I didn't feel wrong, I shouldn't have peace. And the one who deserved the praise for my grace and my peace, I ought to get excited about the power of the living God. That's how much he loves us. I'm convinced ain't no devil gonna turn me around. I'm gonna praise him when I don't feel like it. I'm gonna praise him when everything's going well. I'm gonna praise him with my world upside down. Because if I know if I praise him long enough, he'll turn it right back up. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. Do you not know if you give God your best praise, he'll give you his best blessing? Somebody had not learned that yet. But if you give God your best praise, he will give you his best blessing. And I know that we have visitors and you're not accustomed to just blessing God. But amen, if the spirit moves on you, you just say, I'm going to bless God. Because I got a flashback. We learned, we learned in Bible study, amen, you can't pray forward if you don't remember what he did back then. Y'all ain't helping me. To give you peace in prayer, you don't pray about what you want in the future. Start thanking God about what he did in the past. And if God has done something in the past, guess what? He'll do it for you in the future. I need you to praise him for one couple of things. Praise him for his past. Now praise him for your future. Come on, give God some praise in this house. Come on, give God some praise in this house. I didn't bring myself out. He brought me.
before we greet our neighbors, some brothers and I was having some conversation. And we wanted to know why is it that every time we need something done in the church, we can't get the men to do it. We have to rely on the women to get the man's job done. Amen. So now I'm going to ask every woman to sit down. Now you say you're a man, stand up. You over 20, stand up. If you're a young man, stand up. Now with the men, take the lead in the praise. Then the women can't help but be blessed. Now we're going to move the church forward on the praise of the men. All right, men, this is your time to praise. I'm going to see how loud you can clap. When I think about his goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Now let me see the men praise God. If you're the head, the body will follow.
Lord, we thank you that on the 50th day after Jesus went back at the ascension, there came the Holy Ghost like a mighty rushing wind. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. It's through the Holy Ghost that we have power over the enemy. Satan, you are a liar. You are a killer. You are a deceiver. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit. You said whatsoever we bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we loose in the earth shall be loosed in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we bind up everything that is not like God. Every cancer, every disease, every heart condition, every broken heart, every place where there's no peace, we bind it up in the name of Jesus and we loose it up into heaven. God, move around this altar in a mighty way. We declare, we decree in Jesus' name that every prayer would be heard, every prayer would be answered. God, I thank you now as your spirit fall in this house. God, let your spirit reign in this house to give power to our prayer, God. We thank you right now for all that you're going to do for us. God, I lift all of these people to you and I plead the blood. Hallelujah. I plead the blood over every home. I plead the blood over every person, over every child. I plead the blood of Jesus. Give 
give God some praise for an answered prayer. Come on, praise him for an answered prayer. I need some believers to praise God for an answered prayer. Don't praise because you don't see it. Praise because you stop. You can't see it, but you know it's on the way. Somebody need to hear that. I don't mind waiting. When you're waiting. I don't mind waiting. God is just opening doors for you. When you're waiting. Oh, the Lord. He's getting that blessing. I don't mind waiting. Oh, yeah. I don't mind waiting. If you just hold I on. Don't just hold
And I said, Jesus, if I'm going to die like this, I, wanted to, I, I, wanted to, I don't want to feel nothing. And I want to see your face. And I kept repeating his name. And when I opened my eyes and I looked the other way, they were gone. young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men abide ye here with the coat and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on the altar of Isaac laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both up together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father he said here am I my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of, both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told them, and Abraham built an altar and laid wood in order, and bound, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay him. And then I want to jump down, and, um, and he's verse 12, and he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy thing unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast withheld my son, thy only son. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt ivory instead of his son. I want to talk today just simply from this subject. Just say yes. Just say yes. I wanted to, through the Holy Ghost, help me find some freshness in this story. God is looking for his children, his real children, 
to not question him. But when he tells you to do something that doesn't seem right to you, if you are an obedient child, you don't question God, you just say yes. So God takes Abraham and said, I'm going to separate you from everything you know. You got to leave this place, leave your family, leave all your familiar friends. And guess what? God does not give details. He just gives instruction. Amen. Y'all need to hear me now. Because sometimes God will give you instructions to do something and won't give you the details. And so he didn't give Abraham any details. He just said, leave them. Amen. And if you follow me, I'll lead you. Amen. God ain't looking for no wrestling. And Abraham did not wrestle with God. Abraham said, yes, Lord, I will follow you wherever you lead me. Amen. I'm finding out one thing that Christians need to know. You can't be grown and be in God's kingdom. And I'm going to tell you where that came from. It came from Wednesday night Bible study where Jesus said, except you come as a child, amen, except you come unto me as a child, will I be able to accept you into the kingdom? So Matthew 18 said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a little child, you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. Obedient children, when they receive instructions, they say yes. And I dare you today to say yes to God, even when you don't know where he's leading you. I dare you to step out by faith when God hasn't given you any details. Hallelujah is the highest praise. But let me help you out. Obedience is the highest form of worship. If God can get a yes, if God can get a yes, he can increase you. If you can just get a yes, yes, God, whatever you want me to do. Yes, God, wherever you want me to go. Yes, God, I'll stay as long as you want me to go. When the prophet Isaiah, uh, the person he had his eye on was a man named King Uzziah. And King Uzziah died. And Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. But then God started talking about his filthy mouth and how he needed to put hot coals in it to clean it out. But then after God got through with Isaiah, he asked the question, whom shall we see? And whom shall go for us? And Isaiah said, hear my Lord, send me. I need 25 folks in here who ain't a chain of shame to say, Lord, if you send me somewhere, listen, here I am, Lord, but notice in the text, and they he took his son, only son Isaac, and he told him that we were going to Moriah. He didn't tell him, but you know, Isaac would follow along. And offer him for a burnt offering upon the mountains which I tell you. I want to tell you something. Before you can get to the mountain top, you got to deal with the bath. If you can't say yes, could God in the valley, when he's asked you something difficult, you will not be able to say yes to God on the mountaintop. 
I'm not getting much help today, so I'm going to go and preach this thing to myself. If God can just get a yes, but look at Abraham, first three. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his coat and took the two young men. Verse four, on the third day, now God gave him instructions, but it took three days to get details. Amen. Sometimes when God gives you instructions, he want to see first, can you be faithful with the instructions before I reveal to you what it is I actually want you to do. God can't use you if you're not willing to be used. I don't care who you are. Whatever you used to be and God delivered you from, then God needs you to say, yes, I'm not ashamed to give my testimony about the goodness of the Lord and where he brought me from. But we so sophisticated and dignified, we want folks to believe we had it like this all the time when you really didn't have anything. God needs some living testimonies. And I asked the question, how can you hide from the Father who is omniscient, omniscient and omnipresent and knows all? So who are you hiding from? And when you hide your testimony, then God is not glorified. God can get on glory only out of your testimony so an unbeliever can hear the power of God and begin to say, hey, I want to know about that Jesus that you are talking about. If he did it for you, I know he can do it for me. So when you get sick sometimes, it's good to jump up and say, I was sick, but now I'm healed. Yeah, and listen as I close. Abraham finds himself at the bottom of the mountain. He was down, but he looked up. Oh my God. You may be down now, but you're on your way up with God. But let me help you out. Before you go up to the next level in your journey, you got to do what Abraham did. And you got to leave the two servants behind. Because where God is taking you, everybody cannot go to the top of the mountain. Listen, before you go up and worship, you need to live, so leave some things behind. In the book of Hebrew, they call Abraham a friend of God. And I'm, you know something? Don't, 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 don't bash me. Don't put me on Facebook. But I'm going to talk about a song that we sing in the church. And we sing in a lot, some of us. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. The devil is a lie. Because if you are not walking in obedience to God, you are not a friend of God. You may be a child of God, but not a friend of God. God said a friend stick closer than a brother. And I'd rather have a friend in God than just to be a child of God. Can I help you out? There are some friends I grew up with that know stuff about me that my children don't even know. You need a friend that know your stuff and a child don't even know it. Listen. Because my children don't know, my friend know. Abraham found the instruction. And Isaac was 20 years old. 
Isaac was a grown man. Isaac could have easily told his daddy, no. But guess what? He is a child of promise. So this is what the Holy Spirit told me. Your promise cannot be in a position to tell you what to do. Amen. Oh, y'all gonna get it when you get home. Amen. Don't get so blessed by the blessing that the blessings start telling you what to do. Can I pause for a minute just because you got a new house? House telling you you too busy to go to church. You just got a new car, but you too busy. The blessing keeps you so busy that you can't come to church. You've been elevated on your job. Oh, I'm going to relax on Sunday. But you let the blessing take control of you. You don't let the blessing take control of you. You took control of the blessing. And Isaac understood that I'm a child of promise. I'm a blessing to my father. Listen, two more minutes. Take your time, Pastor. Take your time. See, that's why I need Jesus. I need Jesus as my friend. Abraham had God. But I need a real friend. A real friend hurts when I hurt. A real friend feels the pain when I feel it. A real friend going to stick with me no matter what. Can I help you out? I don't need a friend to take me to Applebee. I need a friend who can relate to what I'm going through. And baby's Applebee's menu ain't gonna change my situation. So, as I close it down, the thing that fascinated me so much is verse 12. <laughs> and I'm through. Diggy, y'all gonna start putting your gloves on. <laughs> and he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou any harm unto him. Here's the key. For now I know. Hold on. For now I know that thou feareth God. That's powerful, y'all. That is powerful. Why is it so powerful? Because I'm saying like Abraham, uh, well, you created me. You knew me before the foundation of the world. You knew what I was going to do. You knew I was going to be faithful to you. You knew I was going to take Isaac just like you said. So how is it that you come back to me and say, now you know that I fear you? Here's a blessing for you. God said the test wasn't for me. The test was for you to increase your faith that God already knows your heart. He just want to reassure you that you are in the right place, in the right position with being with God. I need 25 folks in here say, if I'm out of position, I'm about to get in position. 
And I need another 25 who will say yes to God. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, God. Yes, God. I will. I will. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. If it were not for the Lord, who is on my side, where would I be today? Yes, Lord. Now I need a yes. I need a just yes. Just yes, Lord. Just select, Lord. Wherever you want me to go, just yes, Lord. Just send me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whoever you want to pray for me, want me to pray for, yes, Lord. Even if it's my enemy, I'm going to pray. Somebody need to shout. God wants a higher elevation. God wants somebody who can pray for anybody, no matter what they've done for you. Because you said yes, guess what I can do? I can praise God on a yes. Yes, he woke me up this morning. Yes, he healed my body. Yes, he made a way out of no way. Yes, after all I've been through, I still have my joy. Yes, I'm in my right mind. Yes, I got the movement of my limb. Yes, Jesus died for me. Yes, Jesus got up on the third day. Yes, he sits at the right hand of the Father. Yes, he got all power in his hand. Yes. Now this yes is for you. And we're going home. Yes, I'm healed. Yes, I'm delivered. Yes, there's going to be peace in my home. Yes, there's going to be peace on my job. Yes, I'm going to be a blesser. Yes, I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Yes, God going to give me power. Then I lay hands on the sick. Then the sick shall recover. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. Look real quick and somebody said it could have been me. But I said yes. I need 25 folks saying I wouldn't have been here if I hadn't said yes. I need some real people, some real people. I ain't talking to the cute folk. I'm talking to the real folk who ain't bringing a shame to come from undercover and tell yourself, because I said yes, I'm alive today. Because I said yes. The blessing of the Lord is upon you because you said yes. Your yes has not come yet. Be like Abraham. Get to the foot of your problem and look at the mountain and say, eventually, I'm going to make it to the mountaintop where God is going to do spectacular things. Somebody ought to be with me today. I need some folks who've been through the valley. Where David say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for God is with me. Just say yes. And when you say yes to God, you really don't know what you're canceling out. When Abraham said, yes, I'll go up there, he canceled the death of his death of his son. Can I say this? Hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. This is a revelation that I received. I received that Abraham and God were so close, Dr. Matt. They were free. But God took Abraham through this to him, you all right, Abraham. The test isn't for me, it's for you. And he said, this is what my spirit told me. He said, I wanted to bring you up here because you're my friend. And we're in this 
same position. Both of us.